just waiting to see if there are any that will join. Always takes a few minutes to see what's happening, especially with something like an impromptu live like this. So I just wanted to take the opportunity to say uh, uh, hello and a massive big thank you to everyone who has uh, subscribed to the channel so far. I am incredibly encouraged by the feedback and comments um, from you all and just the interaction, which I really, really enjoy. Um, I have a number of things planned. Next, what I'm going to go to is another uh, section of the patient painter, which is to look at uh, how we might mix colors and to talk about that and my thoughts behind that and how we do all of those sorts of things. But I just wanted to come on and say hello. Hello, Judith. Hope you're well. Did you miss class on Monday night? Looking forward to getting back. Um, so I, uh, I'm just really encouraged by everybody uh, taking the time to watch the videos. Quite overwhelmed with uh, the video about the patient painter. So thank you to everyone for watching that. I'm trying to upload different shorts and things just to just show a little bit more of, of where we can go and what we might do with this channel. But uh, my thoughts on it are that this is a resource and it's somewhere that you feel that you can input and I'll hopefully respond with videos. Um, and I appreciate that there are thousands, ten thousands, millions maybe of uh, painters out there on uh, YouTube. But thank you for taking the time to uh, watch, to like and to comment. So it's really, really appreciated. So as I said, we're going to start looking at mixing and how we might mix and talking about that and being realistic about that. Um, and in the classes that I take, I talk about the, the pendulum swing of mixing, of uh, trying, to find the uh, the, trying to find the color. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself with this. But any uh, questions that you have for me while I'm sitting here? My daughter is currently out uh, leading a small football team. So I'm sitting here and I thought, why the heck not? Would I not go live and interact a little? So if you've got any questions for me, please send them through now more than happy to attempt to answer them. Um, I have been working on, just to give you a little bit of an update, what I've been up to this week. I haven't had a lot of time to be painting and the time that I have had, I've been working on a commission, which I'm quite excited about. So I've been working on that, which has been great and fighting off all of those uh, thoughts of it's not good enough and you can't do this. That's what I, all of us have to do to get out of our heads. So that's what's been happening for me this week, thinking lots actually researching quite a bit about different artists. I was reading and watching a little bit more about Rothko and uh, Picasso today and actually watching footage of Renoir painting, which was pretty cool to watch. I didn't realize that as he got into old age that his hands become really very gnarled from arthritis. So he had assistants that would actually place the, um, they would place the paint brushes into his hands so that he could still continue to paint. And Renoir was pretty successful from very early on in his career, which I, I didn't realize about either. Uh, so that was pretty cool to, to do that today. Yeah, hi, John. Yes, I'm looking forward to getting back to the next class as well. We're gonna be looking at negative space. Can't remember whether you enjoyed that one or not, uh, but that's what we're gonna be looking at. So again, lots of things that we can be looking at on this channel. Uh, thanks for your feedback about the, the layering up, about the patient painter, and also about the, the painter who plans and uh, putting the, you know, thinking it through as to what parts you do first and how you, how you go through all of that. So that was good too. So any questions, please fire them through. We have got a massive total of five people watching. Hello to you five. Thank you for letting me into your space in this moment. Um, and now you guys are just interacting together. It's great. Um, so what can we do next? Where can we go? I, I would love to actually... Uh, hello, hello, Nicole. I would love to look at some different papers um, I have I actually have in the car we have in the car my little kit 
my little travel kit. It's still a little bit too dark, but hopefully in a couple of weeks time, at this time of night, it'll still be quite light. And Judith will know this paper because she really was the one who had got me onto it. If I can, I actually opened my case the wrong way and ignored, ignored my little arrows. This paper here, the Bao Hong paper, um, and it's cotton and it's beautiful to draw on. And um, I would really, really like to try and get some more cotton paper as well. So I, I just like to try out some different papers. Haven't used a hot pressed paper in a long time because it's really far too smooth for me. Um, but just all those sorts of things would be good to, to explore them together. And as I said, I'm also very aware that there are lots of artists out there doing lots and lots of tutorials, but I guess you have to accept that we're all different. We're all going to do it in a different way. So, and everybody's point is valid. So, uh, do keep coming with any uh, comments, questions here for the three of you that are, are watching. I'm trying to think, what could we discuss? We will we'll be doing a, a video on painting night scenes. Did you get the artist's grade? There are two different bow hung papers. The paper that I got, I just got it off uh, Timu. Bao Hong, it definitely wasn't the artist's grade. It was the Bao Hong Pure Cotton Watercolor Paper. Just so lovely to paint onto. John, how does 100% cotton paper compare to the Windsor Newton type? Uh, just, you get these lovely, if I had this more in front, you get these lovely kind of, the. it feels like when you, whenever you draw the brush across the paper, it just uh, leaves it leaves its trace in, a, in a, what feels like a totally different way. But um, yeah, sorry Judith, is that the, it's the Academy paper, did you say then? Or is it Bao Hong Academy, is that what it's called? So John, that, that would be, the difference that I find. Also the, I mean, I'm so used to painting on the non-cotton cold pressed with the little divots and bumps in it. Yeah, absolutely, John, do try it out. And it was the the one that I have, there's my light going in the car. I have to turn the, there we go, back on again. Um, I got it from Timu and got the, the A, A6 size so that it wasn't too expensive. Um, and I, I, it would actually make me want to buy more. I know that Arches, as far as I know, I think Claire in the class uses Arches paper, and I know it's really expensive, but I mean, you get an absolutely beautiful finish. Nicole, you said the artist one is even better, but texture is closer to the rough. I'm just trying it now, excellent. Um, it's interesting, isn't it? And you learn all of these different things. I remember when I first started to understand the uh, GSM rating and what that was about. And now I know that uh, I just don't want to go below 300 GSM because it bows so much on you, you know? And I, there's, see why the Brighton's my, prepare, my preferred type of paper. And I bought their um, acrylic paper and it's 360 GSM. And it's all the more rigid, which is really, really good. Nicole Perrin Arches, it was over a hundred dollars here. That's why I'm trying the buy hung. I don't blame you. Here we would pay, I think, about 35 or 40 pounds for Arches, say A4 size alone. I think Arches are pretty much irregular sizes as well. But um just no, it was just nice. It was just enjoyable uh, painting on the on the cotton paper. So yeah, hard, hardly recommend that. And also some of the, the cheaper papers, like um, there's a company here called Hobbycraft and they, I don't know whether you can get their own brand ones now, but they were really relatively inexpensive and I really quite enjoyed them. They were 300 GSM and I'm trying to think, I, yes, I had bought Sea White of Brighton in um, Hobbycraft and I think it was 11 pounds a couple of years ago for 15 leaves in one of those single sided gum strip pads. And um, then I find they have a sort of a, a part of their website called Art Saver. I think it's .com or .co.uk, art with an E, A-R-T-E, Saver. And I was able to buy 50 uh, sheets of a4 now it's slightly larger than a4 but i was able to buy 50 sheets and it was really re i mean ridiculously uh different ridiculous difference in price so that's how i buy it now and buy it in bulk um, and buy other types of the paper at the same time so um yeah 
Judith, you said I like the rough and hot press um, as w as well. Love the rough one. I prefer it to Arches. So Judith, you've tried the Arches then. You've tried a. You have loads of brushes and probably have tried lots and lots of different paper. Um, the cool said this is bigger size, but I've gone much smaller. Judith, Shane is reasonable for both the academy and professional about Hong. I must have a look at Shane. I, I haven't or Shane or however you pronounce it. I haven't. Um, I haven't gone on and ha had a look at that. Um, Nicole, I love arches, but the price is insane. Yeah, I know. Um, the other thing, yes, have you tried this? And I have massive boards of it. They had it on, either on offer or poorly priced, and they hadn't caught it on. But it was five pounds per board. I think it's of A1 uh, watercolor board. So that's not gonna bow or buckle at all. Um, and I was actually thinking, could you buy a board and just, you know, use that? probably be quite nice to do that but again more expensive it's now eight pounds for the a2 but i mean that's not too bad or the a1 it's not too bad cut down the middle you've got two a2s for um, what four quid each which isn't bad at all and um, also in school i saw some of the art teachers encouraging the pupils to um use canvas so they were actually painting on to canvas with watercolor which actually was surprisingly effective and I uh, whenever I'm painting on canvas because I'm a watercolorist I tend to mix the uh, acrylic certainly at the start way down to a wash and it goes on really very well um, okay John said have you done much painting with the charcoal paints you got no I, I haven't um, I had a go with them when I first got them and really liked them I would need to be I would need to just solely focus on them and again that's something that I, I may that's a great idea actually John just even comparing different paints and uh, playing about with different paints I find that I need to really um, really like use them to get used to it and even with a palette like I get used to where each of the I'm sure we're all the same get used to where each of the colors are positioned actually on the palette Judith said never tried it what's it like to paint on you know, with charcoal paints and um, good evening Judith sorry I missed your message <laughs> Um, I must I must show you I don't know Judith whether I'd shown you those uh, it was a little set that had come with that scrawler box that I tried um, and it came with it was a wee set by Derwent and it's um, tinted charcoal paints and they they're not uh, they're not sh shiny they're just they're just a little bit different which um, they're fun and they're nice to use okay Nicole I just tried fiber castle graphite aquarel which is graphite you can then paint with like you would with watercolor pants. It's quite fun. Yes, I bought a, a pack of those as well. Really lovely. They give a really lovely effect. And um, the, I was gonna say, the Derwent, my beloved watercolor uh, pencils are the Derwent Ink Tents, just for the sheer explosion of color that you get whenever you add water to it. Yeah, Judith, the board, you should try the board. I mean, actually, what am I saying? I need to try the board. But the uh, eight pounds for, I think it is a one, and there's just no buckling. So effectively, it's like stretch watercolor paper. Lol, now in the conversation, I feel like I've all talked out about paper. I'm trying to think of I've tried anything else. Do any of you regularly uh, stretch paper? Now, there's an artist I follow on Instagram, and he... Um, he, he, I'll get back to the ink tents, Nicole, in a wee second. He stretches, I think, for everything because so much of his practice is really letting the water pour onto it and uses things like clumps of snow and, you know, all sorts. So he really needs it to be stretched or <laughs> I don't think he'd ever get it framed. The ink tents, uh, Derwent ink tents watercolor pencils are incredible. Like, I mean, absolutely incredible really really good and the blocks um there's a short on the channel there that i use the blocks for and it's just fantastic john uh comment stretching uh seems like too much hassle to be honest and judith said no only in class uh stretching i think is from my point of view too much hassle to be honest <laughs> i think you're right john um i think maybe for I don't know, I was going to say maybe for special pieces, but I would actually then feel like it was too precious and it would probably stop the process for me a wee bit. Jaden Fairman, why the long face? Uh, I don't know, it's just the face that I've got. We're all very happy here. 
the cool pattern i like to work wet but i prefer the blocks of paper less trouble yeah but the board uh, lee marks high uh, blocks are great uh, definitely try the board and i think buying it in that larger size and just taking a stanley blade and uh, cutting it is probably a really good solution too because then you've got paper that's not going to buckle but also try canvas try painting watercolor on the canvas and get back to me because i was amazed how well it actually goes on it's really quite incredible let me see i'm trying to think what other media i've seen them um, i think daniel smith do some like watercolor sticks i think you can get have any of you tried the watercolor sticks i'm open to try all sorts of different things see what they're like um oh i got the i went for i couldn't find them in hobbycraft i had some birthday money and i wanted to get some uh, more of the darwin ink tense watercolor pa uh, pencils the bigger set and they didn't have the ink tense so i just bought their standard watercolor boy was i disappointed and in the end i went back and i said listen look i've tried these i i totally appreciate you're likely not going to take them back but is there any chance you would? And they very graciously did take them back and then I bought a larger set of the ink tents. I know with the ink tents, you can buy a set that's near like 300 pounds. So what would that be, four or $500? But I think that would be just incredible. Just absolutely incredible. Let me see. Uh, Lee Marks, haven't tried the blocks yet. John Baxter, like pastels? Yeah, I think they're like, um, they're, I think, Google uh, or go on to Amazon or even on to Daniel Smith and you'll see they do um, watercolor like, looks like crayons nearly I think that they are. Judith, you haven't tried those. Lee says, I saw the sticks earlier, they're 11 pounds each. Yup. It's an expensive game when you're playing with Daniel Smith. Although I was thinking I'm running out of undersea green and my Payne's grey or Jane's grey is running low and um, I was thinking I must go down. There's a shop in Hollywood here in County Down, Northern Ireland, not in California. Is it California or LA? Um, and they do Daniel Smith, uh, the tubes. And I think that the tubes, I think it was maybe you, Jeff, that said to me that the tubes are actually better value because then you can squeeze them in to the little pan and then look here. Nicole, do you like the tube paints or pan? I like the tubes. I find the pan colors more murky. So um, if you watch the video that I did recently, I far prefer the pans because I find that getting the consistency uh, from a tube is much more difficult. I end up treating them like acrylic. So even if I buy the tubes, I'll squeeze them into the pan and let them uh, set and cure. Judith, I bought the Karen Dash pencils. Oh, really interesting. And why so, Judith? Was it because they were so like lacking in pigment have you did i let you try the i think i did did i let you try the the ink tense ones because they're quite incredible the other ones i'm interested to know about are the Al albrecht durer watercolor pencils i think they they look pretty good and i knew the karen dash stuff isn't cheap either so it's a bit pants that it was so disappointing Just wait now, I better keep, I was told why the long face, so I better keep, keep smiling. I also uh, had altered my, no, I hadn't altered my practice. I had uh, tried something a little bit uh, different. Okay, so Nicole Perrin, my pencils are Stedler Carrot. They're not bad, right? Okay, never heard of them. Um, definitely heard of Stedler, just now haven't heard of the Carrot. Um, I tried drawing with, I in days of yore would have used pencil to underpin the, the uh, watercolor and did that fairly recently and well maybe about a year or so ago and really wasn't enamored with the result. I am a watercolor and ink through and through kind of guy so um, I'll definitely keep remaining with that or actually in class I had I started doing a, one of the landscape scenes I'd put up a couple of weeks ago. I just started straight into painting. And then I was building up the layers, painting with the, just straight with watercolor onto the paper and then using the ink tents on top of that. Judith, let me see. John said, I have the Windsor and Newton pencils, although they don't seem as good as the ink tents. Yeah, I know, it's true. Um, Judith, I have the ink tent, ink tent sticks, but very little pigment in the Karen Dash. And do you use the ink tent sticks much, Judith? Uh, Nicole Pern, don't smile all the time. I work with someone like that's creepy. I know, 
you know. It's just not not believable. I remember going into a, a trainer or a sneaker store um, in America and they were just perky all the time and it was just too much. It was just too much energy for me, to be honest. I'm trying to think oh, what other... What are what other uh, ways you can? What other means of watercolor that there are? Oh, watercolor pens! Now Toby, Toby Sketchless, uh, fantastic! I uh, love his stuff. Um, he's been doing fairly recently some videos, I think, on the using the watercolor pens, and I was just talking with him a little bit about that. There was a live we did together, and uh, he was using, I think, a little bit of the, ink to, the watercolor, there you go, sending ink tense pens. Excuse me, the watercolor pens, Windsor Newton ones. I think they'd be really interesting to try. Um, just when painting the Belfast cranes, right? Okay. Yeah, I, the other thing I tried in class the last time was, because I had painted on or started the painting with the watercolor paint rather than drawing, then use the Inktense pencils and block into the, the, so it was not wet on wet, but you know that kind of idea. And it was really interesting using it that way and then even going back and applying more water onto it to, to just let it explode. So it was good. So I'm, I have to say, totally delighted with this uh, live. Last time I did this, I think there was two people on, so this is great. Lee Marks, Toby did some trials recently with the pens, mixed results. <laughs> great pun, great pun. I, d I don't know what I think. I, I would like to get them to try them. I don't know uh, how I would get on with them. I think, I don't know. Really, I really love the watercolor pencils and the blocks, the intense ones, absolutely fantastic. I have the, this is completely different, but I have the Pro Markers, the Windsor & Newton Pro Markers, which I love. I haven't used them for a while, must must use them again. So there's a there's another video. Nicole Perrin, have you tried instant coffee? Uh, beet juice and tea, they're fun to try. I want to try the graphite mixed with watercolors and maybe the metallic colors. Uh, no, haven't tried the instant coffee, although have thought of it. Sometimes you know the moment where you have a cup of tea or coffee beside you when you're painting and then you you stick the brush in. So you've actually got some uh, cerulean blue and some fair trade coffee in going onto the, onto the page. The metallic colors, I don't know, I'm too much of a purist for that. I um, had got, I'd subscribed to Scrawlerbox which they're worth checking out. They're scroll, S-C-R-A-W-L-R box, scroller box. And I had got a couple of their boxes. The last box that they did was this uh, pearly metallic kind of girly colors. And I just have no use for them. So I thought, nah, if this is gonna be the kind of stuff that we're getting, I don't don't really think that it's um, for me. And also I'd find that um, some sales and things were down, so I just didn't want to waste the money to be honest either. Judith, have I tried, Kur is it Kurataki you pronounce that? No, never. Judith, what are they like? Um, John, is beetroot coffee permanent when it's dry? I would, ass I would assume it probably is because I mean, even look at what beetroot does to uh, and I think it's beside whenever, you know, you lift it out of the pickle jar. It does sound like fun. Um, it does, really does actually. It'd be interesting to see, could you layer up too? Could you, <laughs> could you have, <laughs> could, <laughs> you, could, you could maybe have like a mocha, uh, a latte, a skinny latte, an Americano, uh, a double espresso <laughs> and see, see how you get on. It does sound like fun. Try turmeric. Ooh, what's do you mean like uh, the? Well, obviously you mean the spice, and like it's probably sa although saffron would be blooming expensive to use. Judith, kurataki can be used as watercolor, but but can be more like gouache. Ooh, never tried them. Nicole, this year I decided to try a lot of new stuff. I haven't even used masking fluid. No, I've ne I have never, never used masking fluid before either. I've bought some but never used it, and I never used black or white. So I'm going going going. Out of my comfort zone. I like using, um, yeah, the spice. It stains everything it touches. I've never had ever a reason to use turmeric. Oh yes, John, you're inspiring us all. Um, so the kurataki. So they, 
Is it Kuratake or is it Kuratake or Kuratak? Probably you could pronounce it whatever way you want. Um, just, what was I going to say? I use Indian ink sometimes and Indian ink added in with water school. I bought a acrylic ink one time. wasn't overly, came with a dropper, didn't really know how to use it or what to do with it. So that was uh, fun to do. I don't really use the white much either. Nicole, use blacks all the time. The beloved paints gray. Love a paints gray. Uh, but I would, wouldn't really use white. Sometimes I would use the t buff titanium, I think it's called, in uh, Daniel Smith for cream buildings and things like that. Turmeric is nice on fish. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I love? Paprika. Paprika would be brilliant. I love the look. John says I love the look of gouache paintings. I don't know. I don't know. I just, I, I don't really understand gouache. It sounds like it's just everything mixed with white. I mix my blacks, I'm old school. You mix your blacks. So, good question here. Nicole, what do you mean by mixing your blacks? Like I, so I I would get an ivory black and if I have no paints gray, then I add an ultramarine or cerulean and you know, play about with it to get those kind of things. But I was just thinking, as in like get it from scratch. I wonder what black's actually made of. You'll bring the Kuratak or Kuratake or Kuratik next week to class. Tremendous. I'd like to I'd like to see what they're like. Wouldn't it be great if you had an endless budget and you could just buy all sorts of different things? There was a, a type of watercolour. Is it on Jackson's um online or are they in London? And or is it Sennelier? I think it or Sennelier are they more pastels? But there was some type of watercolour just looked incredible. The watercolour Windsor and Newton professionals, I'd really like to give them a go sometime. <laughs> Is that Hungarian or smoked perpika? I'm thinking smoked perpika, Wayne. Good good evening, Wayne. Good to see you. Well, not that I can see you, you can see me. Judith, black made with the primaries nicer. Uh, okay, so you do you mean like having an ivory black and then adding a colour into it is nicer than the, the likes of the bot jeans grey or paints grey? Lee Marks, a lot of Etsy sellers have handmade watercolours. I ordered some last week in a wedding delivery. Yeah, there's a girl, Madeline Carey and Amber Lane Art, I think it is, on Instagram. And I know that they promote and use lots and lots of different uh, handmade watercolours and I remember I think in school they have the the it's like a big pumice grinder thing that they grind down the pigment and then they add an Arabic gum I think to get it to stick together so it's pretty interesting and um, Nicole I use blue and red and whatever else I need to make the shade of black I need whether warm or cool oh impressive impressive John are we making a palette of foodstuffs squid ink for the dark colours there's bound to be a video somewhere on YouTube that somebody's done doing watercolor with um, like base products like squid ink and your turmeric or saffron or pap paprika or whatever. Coffee, Lee Marks. Mine are from Quartz Creations, all from minerals. Interesting. Mix red, yellow and blue to make your own black. Oh, interesting. Simone, hello Simone, how are you? Thanks for stopping by. What time of the day? We have uh, Northern Ireland and America, I think, on here. Do we have anywhere else? I'm at my leisure. I'm waiting for my daughter to be finished at 8 o'clock, so I have time here. Jump in on the conversation, Simone. Ah, Mr. Blackbird, Italy. I, every time I see your name, I think he lives in Italy. Oh, even the coffee alone, it's just beautiful. Yeah, well, you could paint with it. Would be a terrible shame to paint with your the gorgeous espressos you get in Italy. Oh, Wayne in Australia, goodness me! What other foodstuffs could we use to? Wonder well, soil actually. Difference you could. Oh. Now there's a video, a very expensive video you could do, but painting with different soils from around the globe. That would be interesting. Yorkshire. Good evening from Yorkshire. My surname's Woodward. Woodward's a Yorkshire name. I am grandfather's from Yorkshire. Nicole, depending which blue or red or yellow you use gives you the warm and the cool. Very interesting. Well, I am learning something new here. Every, every 10 minutes there seems to be a long conversation as I run out of things to say until you, you all write in something incredibly interesting. What about pens? 
what's your preferred pen? Now, I have... I have the Faber-Castell pit pens. Absolutely fantastic, filled with Indian ink. I have just one Unipen fine liner in my little travel kit. I have one pencil. I have my brushes. So for a while in my travel kit, all I had was these natural hair brushes. I can't stand them. And then I got my little travel, well not travel, for the travel kit, the dual Taclon synthetic, which I absolutely love, are fantastic. Nicole Perrin, John and Jenton, an artist, makes all her own ink pigments from soil she grinds herself. She's on YouTube. My goodness, that's incredible. John, Lamy Safari's my go-to these days with carbon ink as per my rec. Yes, John, I'm happy to stand over that recommendation. It's just that, I love that yellow. I don't know whether you have the yellow one. I think, Judith, did you get a yellow one? Uh, fantastic. Lee Marks, Twisby, Twisby. Diamond 5, or maybe you just say TWSBI. Diamond 580 and Eco are mine. Judith says, my pet pen stopped working after two weeks, so now using Unipen on all. Really? That's mad. I'd be sending those back, Judith. Uh, Nicole Perrin, are they squirrel? Squirrel's really so soft, hard to use. I think they, they just says natural hair. I wonder what will tell me on the back. No. It just says natural hair. But I think they probably are squirrel. I don't like them at all. Uh, John, I have an extra fine nib and fine, oh, he is too. Just like there are two. John always sets up with two water pots, which is pretty genius. Um, but two pens, eh? Two pens, John. Um, you got the yellow, yes, because I remember, I, no, it wasn't, I was the, the French lady in the class. Oh, I can't remember. And Christine, Christine, she has a, she bought the yellow one. Uh, that's great, you got, you have one of those too. John, room for a bigger nib in my collection, perhaps. Edges, uh, McElwee, silver, black velvet brushes are great. Yes, I think I've seen, I think I've seen them, that you have those. I, I really want these, because I really love the idea of natural hair, but it's just so annoying the way they, they flop and flip and they don't they don't have any sort of rigidity or sturdiness when you're painting with them. The cold parent, oh, 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 are they? I've been hanging those online. Um, Lee says, I find the carbon ink too dark and shows too much through the colors. Try and KNR a lot now, which is much more dry. Interesting, because actually for me, what I love is the, is how, uh, I was gonna say pungent, how strong the carbon ink black is. Nicole says, squirrel flops and flips. That's a very good description. Thank you for identifying with my frustration with using these. Judith says, I would like an extra fine nib, Lamy, yeah. Do you know the, I, I'm a gadget boy, and one of the things that really sold the uh, Lamy Safari to me was the, the converter that actually you get to dip it into the pot and then screw it up and it sucks it up. I thought that was just fantastic. I'm trying to think what else is in my kit ink pad and of course an extra set of the beloved little stampers they were i think 199 in in hobbycraft and they're now the effectively like a, a signature for me in most of the things that i do i inherited this is a little dealer rowney travel kit and it's normally well i don't really use dealer rowney well i do when i'm painting here but it's actually a lovely little set and um kind of means something to me as well. Nicole, has anyone ever tried those glass pens? I have never heard of those glass pens. Do you sound interesting? The TWSBI are piston filling pens. I like that. Ooh, piston filling pens. Tonight, people, is an education. An absolute education. I don't think what else I have. Oh! I had forgotten that in my travel kit, hey! I have the Derwent Ink Tents, which are just absolutely phenomenal. Judith, I have a glass pen, I have to dip too often. Toby uses them, oh interesting. 
uh, Julian Etch, I have a glass pen, they're so smooth. I have three different dip pens, and one I bought as a pack in uh, Hobbycraft. Came with that, We'd, I'm a sucker for a little tin. It's like my little travel box. Um, so a little tin, and it has lots of different nibs in it. I love using the Windsor & Newton um, Indian ink and dip pen. I just love how it changes the changes the way that I draw. I find that actually different media brings out different styles. What do you what do you think? Do you find that too? So I will definitely be doing a video on again the ink tents. Uh, probably the blocks. Uh, John, thanks for the idea about the the tinted charcoal. Definitely engraving. Um, or no, not engraving, etching or engraving on the block and then making an etching print or etching, whatever you want to call it. Lino print. Um, I'm going to do painting on the screen print canvas, which is really, really interesting as well. Um, also, something else I was going to say, acrylic painting. Uh, I'll try about with, play about with some oil. So lots and lots and lots to do. Um, and I've just realized that I need to go and get myself sorted because we as a family are going to the gym which is a first for us, but it's going to be interesting. So I need to go in a couple of minutes. Uh, John said, thoughts on masking fluid? I've never used it. I, I think I like the idea better of leaving the negative space myself rather than having to use a substance to do that. But I've never tried it, so I would need to try it and then get back to you. But interesting, but I've learned a lot about the piston filling pens, glass, glass pens. Let me see. You want to try the rolling pens? No, never tried rolling. Never even heard of rolling pens. I think we should do this again. This has been very informative. Nicole, I have to learn urban scenes. I do landscape, but buildings and cars are difficult. A couple of videos and tricks would help. Uh, yeah, sure. I uh, Urban sketching is effectively what I do. I tend to leave cars and uh, people out. So... Uh, there you go. Judith, masking fluid can be handy in floral paintings. Interesting. That's right, you took a class on doing botanical art. And Simon says, I love the vacuum filling TWSBI, so fun to recharge. You guys, Simon, you're a gadget freak as well. Nicole, that's why I'm here. Uh, Julianne, uh, look them up, they look so cool. I've, I have them, just not tried them yet. Ooh. Isn't it far too easy to buy so, uh, to just keep buying materials? It's just the easiest thing in the world to spend a clean fortune, isn't it? Right, I need to go. Uh, absolutely delighted that I, I actually have to put an end to this madness because I have to go and get ready, get myself ready for the gym. But, uh, so the point of uh, fountain pens hobby is a disease. Yes, Toby, uh, Mr. Uh, Toby Hessler has a, an addiction problem with pens. So just, I started this off by saying thank you to everybody who has subscribed really quite quickly to the channel for the views. I really appreciate that, you know, time's precious. So thanks so much for being here tonight, for chatting, for all that we've learned, uh, just for your comments and, and getting to know you all. It's brilliant, thank you. Um, John says, Hobbycraft is a dangerous place for the credit card. Yes, sir, it is. Uh, Julianne says, they're like a reservoir of ink, the, the piston drawn up a ticket. Julianne McAwee, I'm writing my list for the States. <laughs> I think I'd like to write you a list for the States as well. And Simon says, put some, put some likes to Colin. I appreciate that. Thanks very much. Okay, good evening, everyone. I will uh, put this video up and let it be live. Have fun in the gym, Simon. Fun? I don't think so. I can run a bit. My fun in the gym is going into the sauna. <sighs> so anyway, anyway, uh, have a good uh, morning, afternoon or evening, whatever it looks like. But thanks very much for all we've learned and all the comments. Great stuff. And over and out.